The SEAL motto is the only easy days yesterday. So that would infer that, hey, you're, you're uh, always uncomfortable. Um, they, they make us do plenty of drills and different training throughout my career, specifically more in BUDS, that um, you know, teaches you to be comfortable being uncomfortable. If you take uh, uh, you know, drown proofing, they hire, tie your hands and feet, throw you in the pool, make you do a whole bunch of drills. To a lot of people, that would be uncomfortable. Right? Your, your hands and feet are tied, you're in a pool, but, but it's a heated pool and it's in San Diego and uh, there's you know, six instructors swimming around and they're not gonna let you drown. It's six months long. It's, it's big, it's overwhelming, but uh, I broke everything down into one bite at a time. Because if you, if you focused on, hey, look, how am I gonna get through six months? That would be much too overwhelming for me. So right. I broke everything down into one meal, one bite. So, hey, if I could make it to breakfast, awesome. If I can make it to lunch, even better. Dinner, okay, cool, let's see if I can do it again the next day. And I did that throughout my entire career, no matter what I was involved in, what I was doing, everything was down. Prioritized list, top to bottom, one bite at a time, the most important things first. And then the, the things that uh, didn't need to be dealt with, I just simply moved to the side and I wouldn't worry about. The more pressure, the smaller bites, because you've got so much going on. I look at everything that way. I've been in so many miserable, uh, shitty situations that just plain suck. Okay, you're gonna do it. I'm not not gonna do it. Uh, but if you can sit back, look at yourself, laugh about it. Uh, I've been in some crazy gunfight situations, you name it, where everybody's miserable, but you look to your left and right, you see your buddies, they're kind of laughing and joking, and you're like, okay, all right. I honestly, uh, and you talk to different guys, some guys say, you know, hey, they thought about quitting every day at Buds. I honestly never thought about quitting. Every single day did I think, wow, this sucks? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it sucked every minute. But the way I looked at it was, hey, look, I looked at these instructors. If they can do it, I can do it. There's nothing that they've done that I, I can't accomplish as well. The majority of the people that don't make it through the program simply quit. So they choose not to be there. Not that they couldn't do it physically, but they choose not to be there. If you break everything down, I've got some statistics here. This is a culmination of what each class, each BUDS class has done in a six month period of time. Each student runs 1,627 miles wow. during that time, swims 134.2 miles, runs the obstacle course 39 times, conducts 42 dives, spending 61 hours underwater. Uh, each class expends 1,413,000 rounds of small arms ammunition. Each class detonates 13,382 pounds of high explosives. You hike or patrol 150 miles. You complete a combat conditioning course, which is a 12 mile run, wearing 70 pounds of gear and three hours or less. And then if you add it all up, basically the equivalent of swimming from Cuba to the southern tip of Florida, and then running all the way to New York City. Had they shown me these statistics before I uh, you went have to done. Buds, no way, I'd be a banker or something. <laughs> I wouldn't have been a SEAL. It would have been completely overwhelmed. You would have, would have moved right back to Alaska and been, all right, this is not for me. But again, back to breaking everything down and the majority of the people quit. They thought about two months ahead of time thinking, wow, what if I can make it through rather than worrying about the, the, the bite, you know? A lot of us used to laugh and joke. We look back on our BUDS experience and it was kind of nice because you didn't have to think of anything. It was simply do exactly what they tell you and do it at 200%. As you mature on the teams, you become a leader, and then you got more responsibility. I remember a drill that our teachers had us do, and it had to have been third grade. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but it had been around third grade. It was winter time. The majority of the people who, uh, who, who died uh, in the area would die of hypothermia, you know, fall through the ice, whatever it was. So the school they had two different drills. One of them, they, they went out, cut a hole in the ice, and literally, <laughs> I don't even know if we signed release waivers, but they take you out there, they dunk you in the cold water, I mean, it was the middle of winter, hole in the ice. They had, it was like 15 or 20 seconds, that they held you in there, pulled you out, and then you were expected to rewarm yourself. We had a tent set up there right. and, the, and the, the concept was, hey, get used to taking off all your wet clothes. If you right. have to be naked or dr put dry clothes on, whatever it is, is the, the steps to rewarm yourself in, in something, in a situation like that, because that happened a lot. The other thing they had you do is they, they gave everybody a, a one gallon tin can full of soapy water, two matches, and you had to go start a fire from scratch. No, no paper, no, uh, no fuel, no starter fluid, no anything. Peel bark, start a fire, you had two matches. 
third grade. Wow. And the first kid to build a fire big enough to take his pot of water, put it on top, get it to bubble over, he was the winner. Wow. But that was that was third grade, how I grew up. I didn't think anything that I learned in the military would translate to civilian life. I assumed that uh, I'd be a really good shot, go skydiving on the weekends and, and so on and so forth. But everything I did learn in the teams does translate. I apply the exact same rules I did when I was in, uh, getting through buds, assaulting a target, going through any training I did, I apply those same ones now. Little takeaways that I look back on and I think, wow, okay, I apply every single one of these things to my life today and, and I got out of the SEALs two years ago. The first thing I have is teamwork. There's absolutely zero that I accomplished during my career that I could not have done without a team, without a team period. You gotta right. put the needs of the team above your own. Buds does that repeatedly. They throw you in a boat, make you paddle out through the surf zone. You're already tired, miserable, hungry. And then, you know, the, the boat gets flipped over in the surf and you gotta work together as a team. It's very easy to see who's willing to put the needs of the team above their own. The folks that, that pull back and worry about their own needs, they're typically not the ones standing there at the end. Prioritize and eat one bite at a time. Uh, I apply that to the, the stress that I'm under these days. Uh, I break it all down, I prioritize it. If I can't affect it, I don't even worry about it. And, and that's something learned. You, you're not, you don't get good at that from the beginning. Be all in all the time. A quote from uh, Tommy Valentine, uh, one of the better leaders at the command for a long time. And he used to ask uh, a lot of the new guys, at what level are you willing to participate? And the only right answer was be all in all the time. Whether you're sweeping the floors, charging a machine gun nest, what, whatever it is you do, I don't worry about two weeks in advance. I worry about what I'm doing right then in the moment that I'm gonna do that as best as I can. I look back and think, okay, listen, I, I'm, I'm nobody special. I haven't done anything different or better than anybody else, but I look back and think, okay, I lived through that situation. I can deal with this.